Uh, thank you, and let me begin by saying thank you to COFAS for giving me this opportunity to share a few thoughts with you. Uh, I do have to tell you also that uh, looking at two regions like North Africa and the Middle East and trying to discuss those in 25 minutes is a little bit like taking this herd of oxen that Merrill Lynch used to have galloping across your television screen uh, years ago when they were still bullish on America and uh, trying to boil this down into a tiny little bouillon cube. So let me try to do this in some very broad brush strokes, if I may. Uh, at first, as far as some of the basic trends are concerned, uh, we all do know now that these uh, revolutions that swept the uh, region uh, began in Tunisia. And Tunisia changed the uh, uh, game in two ways. Uh, Tunisia made it clear, first of all, that in order to have a revolution, you don't need a big organization. All you need is social sites like Twitter and Facebook, and you can organize your demonstrations. Uh, Tunisia also showed that the uh, tyrants that have been running these countries are not necessarily undefeatable. In other words, if you show a solid front, if you put enough pressure on them, eventually they will fall. Uh, so that, of course, had its effect throughout the region, uh, which has in common repressive regimes, uh, limited human rights, poverty, uh, a rising rate of inflation, especially in the areas of food and fuel, which hurts the poor in particular, um, limited employment, high unemployment, especially among young people, generally young populations, and uh, ultimately access to the internet, an internet that showed people how the rest of the world lives and what they are missing out on. Um, also in common is that these revolutions that we have seen lack focus. If you look at the people who started them and who carried them on, uh, the one thing they have in common is that none of them have any plans beyond getting rid of the, of the, uh, uh, of the regime. After regime change, there are really no plans as yet. So there's a lack of focus. Uh, there's also the fact that Iran has been playing a major role and has been trying to make things worse wherever it could. In other words, it has played a role in Bahrain, it has played a role in Yemen, it has played a role in various other parts, wherever it found that this would be to its advantage. Um, also important is the role of militant Islam, and by that I mean particularly Al-Qaeda. And let me say right, right here now that the death of uh, Osama bin Laden is not going to change country risk assessments uh, anywhere in the region. It's not going to have that kind of an impact. Al-Qaeda has long ceased to be this kind of uh, organization oriented towards one person. It is long broken up into various parts. Uh, you probably know it as uh, Al-Qaeda on the Arab uh, Peninsula, Aqab in uh, Yemen. You know it as Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, Akim in uh, the uh, north of Africa. Uh, you know it as Sahab in uh, uh, Somalia. Uh, so it's long broken up into various parts and they will continue to function as they have until now. So the threat is really not gone. Um, and the threat is a long-term one, because one of the uh, uh, favorite sayings of uh, Osama bin Laden used to be, you have the watches, but we have the time. So they are looking at this as a long-term proposition to uh, get the uh, uh, entire West out of the Middle East. Um, the one thing I think one can say in general about the uh, revolutions that are still going on, about the ones that have taken place, is that from a longer term perspective, none of this will be in the Western interest. Uh, most of this will ultimately bring to power regimes that uh, really do not have Western interests uppermost in their mind, as many of them have had until fairly recently. Uh, now, as we look at individual countries, I'm not going to spend very much time on Morocco because uh, Morocco has a uh, king, King Hassan, who is generally appreciated by the population as a benevolent monarch. Uh, he has done a lot for the country. He has uh, modernized, he has reformed, he has economically done a lot for Morocco. And uh, so the tensions there are, they do exist, but they're not at a very high level at this point. I'm also not going to spend all that much time on Algeria 
because although the tensions in Algeria are considerably higher, uh, they are in an environment where people have very keen memories of uh, elections that were held some years ago in which the Islamists, the FIS, the FIS at the time, won the elections, which were then canceled by the military, and this was followed by a civil war that cost about 200,000 lives. So Algerians know enough of uh, trouble and uh, war, and they really don't want to engage in anything new along those lines. So uh, there too, although the tensions are greater, uh, they are not really um, as, uh, not really sufficient as yet to uh, uh, cause a revolution. Tunisia. Tunisia, if you look at Tunisia now, it shows you some of the trends that we need to worry about. Uh, the key trend is that in all these countries, the objective is democracy, the objective is elections. But none of these countries has the infrastructure, has the uh, developed parties to uh, run a democracy and to make it work. Now, democracy is a devil of a difficult thing to make work. If you want to know how difficult, just look at Greece, or in the US, look at Wisconsin, and it gives you an idea. Um, to do this without established parties, without a uh, mechanism, without the institutions that you need uh, to make it work is, is extremely difficult. And that means that as these countries are pushing for elections, the only two groups that have sufficient organization to uh, win these elections are usually the party that used to be that of the ousted uh, tyrant and the uh, Islamist movement, in many cases the Muslim Brotherhood. In Tunisia right now, the uh, Islamist movement, ENADA, is trying to get the uh, party of the uh, previous uh, president, Ben Ali, decertified uh, saying that they really don't deserve to take part in any elections because they were supportive of the ousted regime. On the other hand, the uh, people in that party say that uh, another needs to be uh, worried about, that people should not give another the uh, leeway it needs to gain a majority in parliament because ultimately this will bring in a, uh, a theocratic regime that nobody really wants. So that shows one of the problems that uh, we are encountering these days. If you go a little further to the uh, east, uh, I won't spend too much time on Libya because Libya is currently in a military stalemate. I have to tell you, I have no idea when uh, ultimately uh, Gaddafi will go. That he will eventually have to go is obvious, but when this will be, I have no idea. 